We're going to be continuing in our discipleship journey. And this is actually part seven. I made a mistake in the bulletin, not six, but this is part seven. As we look about our call in discipleship, disciple meaning follower, a disciple meaning to be a student of Jesus Christ in a relationship with our Lord. And what better way is we, you know, today, if we think about our families, our wives, our children, there is an intimacy there. When you get to know somebody, when you, when you are dating someone for the first time, there's this intimacy that you want to get close to them. You want to get to know them. You just want to know everything about them. I remember when Mariana and I first dating, it was, it was just, you know, you just couldn't just want to be there all the time, call them up and, and just want to spend time with that person because you just want to get to know them so much and find out what makes them tick and what they're about, what their personality is about, what they love and the things that they like to do. So there's this bond that starts building up upon you and another person, whether it's your child, whether it's a grandparent, whether it's a sibling, whatever it may be, you, you, you develop that intimacy in a relationship with that person. And so part of our relationship with Jesus Christ, is, it's the same thing. We don't know and see, we, we, we don't see Jesus, but we can know him at a greater depth, a deeper depth, a depth that goes beyond our imagination when it comes to the times where we want to get intimate with the Lord God. And so because of that, we have a God who loves us, who centers on Jesus Christ. So we have the capability and the ability to be able to be intimately with Jesus, with God through Jesus Christ. And so that's one of the things that I was looking at as I'm continuing in this discipleship journey. As part of being a follower, a disciple of Christ, it is necessary, necessary and mostly and very important that we become intimate with the Lord. So he gets to know us. So he knows us by our name as we know the Lord. Just like you talked about the shepherd and the sheep. You know, the shepherd knows the voice. We know the voice of the shepherd and we hear him calling. The first discipleship part I did was about the calling of a discipleship. That calling when you obey God and you follow him. And it's just so critical when it comes to being a follower of Christ to hear his voice, to obey his voice and go forward in our lives, continually growing closer to him with all we have in our soul, our strength and our everything we have, we give to him. So as we continue, our sermon text will be in Mark chapter 1 verse 35. It's one verse, but it's got such powerful things that the Lord has been doing in this verse and he's trying to reveal to us as, as the uh, uh, Mark has recorded this for us. So let's just read this in Mark chapter 1 verse 35. Now in the morning, having risen a long while before daylight, he went out and departed to a solitary place and there he prayed. Let us pray. Thank you, Lord, for this word. Thank you that you've given us eternal life. Thank you that we can become all things in you and do all things in Christ who strengthens us. Father, we are your children through the precious blood of Jesus. We have come because we want to worship and praise and honor your name this morning. Let us be those children you've called us to be, those disciples, those true followers that only God, you have predestined, preordained and called us the elect as children of God. Father, use us greatly. And Father, this morning, let me speak as an oracle of God. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. We pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. First point is intimacy with God is based on communication. What if with our spouses, our children, we never communicated? What if we just ignored them? What if we just closed our mouth? And sometimes, of course, our parents like to have that from our children, just to have them zip their mouth sometimes and be quiet once in a while. But what if we just, they never spoke, we never communicated. We never talked about the issues we face in our lives. Many times, the, the best thing we can do is to get it off our chest. And, you know, that's part of a counseling. As a pastor, I may counsel many people many times. And most of the time, it's really, it requires a listening ear. Sometimes it's just a person who wants to get things out of their system because they've built up different things in their lives and people that have hurt them or whatever it may be. And they just need a little bit of time with someone that is willing to listen to them. Parents, sometimes we get caught up in our lives and sometimes we're not listening to our children. You know, I'll be honest, sometimes the children can give us some basic teaching sometimes and teach us some lessons sometimes because we get so caught up in our little parenting duties that sometimes we're not listening. Sometimes we're not communicating. And communication is not always a one-way street. 
you know, we, we want to tell our children to do the right thing and, and we have to discipline them and things, but, and sometimes we got to do those things, but, but sometimes it's good that we listen. You know, that was hard for me growing up with a stubborn old father I had where he would never want to listen to anybody. So stubborn, he was, his heart was like a brick and his head was like a Mack truck. I mean, he just did not want to listen to anything you told him. But eventually, as he grew older and he came to Christ, he would listen. His heart was changed and he would be able to listen and hear what you're trying to say. And you know, and I sometimes have to fight that. My wife's trying to tell me something. She's trying to get my attention, Mariana. And sometimes I'm about my things and doing my things and I'm just not listening. So part of communication is to want to be, want to be attentive, want to listen to your spouse, want to listen to others around you. You see, this is how we grow. This is how we learn. What is a student? A student is like a disciple, isn't he? He's a follower. And the student goes to school to what, kids? They want to learn stuff. Not just days off and, and daydream, so sometimes we're all guilty of that. But we want to be able to learn something. The teacher's got something to show you, to unfold for you, to give you some knowledge about the things you potentially need in your life for, or a job or whatever it may be. Teacher wants to show you that. Jesus, as a rabbi, as a teacher, Rabboni, they called him even, he was a true teacher in the sense of spiritual matters, things that really pertain to our lives every day. And that's why it's important as we read the Word of God, we apply it to our lives. God's way of communicating to us is number one through the Bible. He gives us a word, He shows us a word, and, and, and we take it or we reject it. Many times we want to reject what God wants to say because we have our own issues. We have some blockages. Sometimes we want to put filters in front of us. We want to filter what good things we want to hear from God, but all of a sudden when God talks about convicting you of something that maybe you're not behaving right or doing something right and it may lead to sin, but you kind of want to suppress that. We want to filter that out. Oh, we don't want to hear about that. That's called buffet Christianity. Pick and choose. Well, in God's kingdom, it's either you're all in or you're all out. We can't be a halfway house. In God's kingdom, we're either giving ourselves totally to our Lord, walking in obedience and saying, Lord, I want to be intimate with you. How can we be intimate with a God or God who says no sin can be in his presence? Well, we have a way. We have the life and truth that is Jesus Christ. When we focus on Jesus, when we see what he did as the example of intimacy with the Father, when he would take out the time, when he needed to get rebuilt up, regenerated his batteries in a sense. Because remember, Jesus Christ was fully human and fully divine. He suffered like you. He cried like you. He understood every aspect about humanity because he was fully human. He understood sorrow, grief. He understood pain. He went through the temptation, all those things that we do, yet except he knew no sin. He never went to the point where he disobeyed God and sinned against the, the glorious Father in heaven. So he understands our needs. He understands our desires. He was moved with compassion for the lost, for those who were hurting, for a nation, and for the world that seems to be dying with its turned inside down, upside down, and inside out. And in a time where our lives were, were seeking answers. But to get the answers, we've got to communicate with our Lord. Speak to Him. You know, in many religious circles, it's, you know, say, tend these, send these, and, you know, if I, you know, we don't want ritual. God doesn't want ritualism. He doesn't want religion. He wants a relationship. A true follower is, is listening to the voice of the shepherd, as we read in there. He's following him. He's hearing what he's saying and obeying it and trying to gain insight as the Lord communicates his message to us. And how does he do that? Well, first of all, it's through the word. The Word of God is full and complete. It's inspired divinely, and it's given us all the lessons of our lives. You know, I, I call the Bible, it's my, it's my life operating manual. When I have questions about my, my life, questions about my faith, and, and, and questions about what I need to do or what's my next step in my life, I have to turn to the Word. I have to get a peace in the Holy Spirit to make decisions. I have to get an affirmation from the Word of God that says, yes, Pastor Bob, you're, you're, you're taking the right step. Well, oh, wait a minute, Pastor Bob, maybe you're not. Maybe, you, you know, you're not doing that right. And, and, and the Holy Spirit will teach us those things. But we've got to be willing to communicate and listen. And finally, to get that peace of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit that says, I want to show you and reveal something to you. I want to reveal Jesus to you. And that's what Jesus said the Holy Spirit would do, didn't he? 
the Paracletos. The Spirit of God reveals to us Jesus. He reveals to those things. It was when I opened the Word of God, it's how I became saved. When I read the Word of God, the Holy Spirit showed me the Word of God, and that's what saved me. Faith comes by hearing, hearing the Word of God. And so I could, I could come to, to know Jesus through His Word, because that's the way the Lord communicates to us. Can God still speak audibly to us? He sure can. He can do what He wants. It's His world. It's His universe. It's His, it's His providence and sovereignty. He can do thou as He wills. But He doesn't need to do that because He speaks to us through the Bible. He speaks to us through preaching. And what does the preaching do? Preaching the Word of God. Hearing, hearing the Word of God. And so Jesus went to a solitude place because He needed rest. Sometimes, you know, we get so bombarded by noise pollution, the media, the worldliness, political correctness, and everything else. Folks, I want to be BC, biblically correct. I want to be able to hear God's word. I want to be able to communicate. And sometimes even I, the pastor, needs a sabbatical. We all need a sabbatical day of rest where we can just recharge our batteries. Sometimes the kids in school, you know, they got homework assignments and books and things and writing this thing or doing this thing and trying to memorize all these different formulas and math, whatever it be. As, of course, you know, uh, Jeff knows about reaching this core curriculum math, I think, maybe. I don't know, but I know he raised his eyebrows up. But, you know, we, children want to learn. They, they, they want to take that in. And so, so we've got to do what we have to do when it comes to those things, to gain wisdom and knowledge, you know. The same thing with the Lord, you know, we, we need to regenerate. We need to just take a break and just kind of reflect on the Lord, kind of just go in that prayer closet. I love that movie War Room. It's a, it's a wonderful movie. If you haven't seen that War Room, it's a wonderful movie where she made a little prayer room and, and she put all these post-it notes in there and she would go in there and pray and pray. I know there's some wonderful grandparents here that do a lot of praying for their grandchildren. And as I pray for you and you pray for me, we are communicating effectively with our God. What better way is there to, to glorify and, and honor Him by speaking to Him? We could never do that without Jesus. God does not hear the prayers of a sinner, John 9, 31. But through Jesus Christ, we have access. He made a gateway, a narrow way that shows and reveal the power of God in our lives. And we are able to communicate and pray to Him. If Jesus, given us the example, took the time to get away from the masses and the crowds, and He went to a place, to the hilltop or mountain, just to go and be with one with the Father. We are to be one with the Father. And I want to continue. It talks about these things in John 10:38. Jesus said, a little while longer, and the world will see me no more. But you will see me, because I live, what? And you will live also. And that day you will know that I am in the Father, you and me, and I in you. Isn't that awesome to know that such intimacy? That the Spirit of God dwells within you? That the Holy Spirit that Jesus sent, the triune God, says, I am going to be in you. In the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit would come upon people and they would prophesy and God would give them revelation. Today, the Holy Spirit resides inside of us. Baptism of the Holy Spirit, when it's inside of you, when you become saved, the Holy Spirit gives you and indwells in you and shows you and reveals to you goodness and gracious things. And He gives you gifts and talents and abilities and wisdom and the fruit, the results of being filled with the Holy Spirit upon your confession of faith to the power of God and being saved through His precious blood. John 14, 19 through 20. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the Holy Spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. The song I wrote, Abba, Father, it's an intimate song between me and my Lord that I shared with you. Because when I received that salvation, I wanted, I, I, I came this, I wanted to be intimate with the Lord. I wanted to know all about Him. I wanted to know what was my Jesus like. Why would Jesus pick you and I to die for? Why? Why would He do that for me? The world may disagree, but I know Jesus is with me and thee. Today, we have the Savior. We have Him available for all of us. And he wants us to communicate, be intimate with him. Also, in Romans, yeah, I finished it. Abba, Father, the Spirit is about witness with our spirit that we what? We are children of God. 
children of God. Isn't that the greatest thing, anything better than being a child of God? How about when you're children of your parents? What if your parents weren't there? That's a hard thing to do. Think if mom and dad wasn't there. And many of us have experienced maybe a mom or dad may have died when you were a very young age. And that's just a hard thing to come overcome. It's a hard thing to do because there's a connection. You have, it's, it's a spiritual connection that God designed in the family of a mom and dad and children. How can a dad and dad be parents or a mom and mom? God designed it, dad and mom, because they have different traits that God's given the women and different traits that God's given a man. Of course, we know that men can only do things one at a time, and women have this multiple brain methodology. They can do six things at once. Carry a baby, cook dishes, and wash the dishes, and, and wash the clothes, and do this, and clean the house, all holding a baby in her hand, and she's just amazing. Us men, if you get us off track, we can't, we focus on one thing, we just get lost. What, what was I doing? Oh, no, I can't figure it out. Just ask my wife when I'm trying to find my socks or something. It's right in front of your nose. Oh, okay, thank you. And while she's doing this and that and everything else. God created us and designed us that way. Just as we communicate with our spouses and each other, or sometimes lack of communication, which happens often in relationships, it's the same with our relationship with the Lord. Sometimes we lack communicating with our God. We lack the intimacy because we got so in, engrossed into many other things that we forget who our daddy is, our spiritual daddy. Secondly, intimacy with God is based on prayer. It's based on prayer. Prayer is necessity. It's, it's necessary and there's no doubt about it. As a child of God, some of the fruit and the results of being saved is you want to pray. You want to say, Lord, you want to thank the Lord for your meals. You want to thank the Lord for things that are happening in your life. Although many times people forget about God when the good things are happening. But all of a sudden when those bad things happen, oh God, oh God. What about God when he was there in the good times? We seem to forget. Our nation, when things are going good, we have material wealth and all these things and toys and all these other things. Oh, life is good. But we forget about God. The nation that forgets God is not a nation under God. But the nation that remembers God, which I believe we should be one nation under God, God will bless us greatly. We should never take God out of the picture, which we know and I and I know slowly but surely. People don't want intimacy with God because when it comes to becoming an enemy with God, sometimes we're convicted. And many times we are convicted because sin does not belong in that presence. But God made a way through Jesus Christ. We just believe in Him and trust in Him and surrender our lives to Him. And then what happens? You're set free from the burden of sin, the chains and the bondage of it. And then we become children of God, free, free indeed, where we can rise up and declare that Jesus is Lord. By the power of the Holy Spirit, where we cry out, Daddy, Daddy. Many times our earthly daddy and mom may let you down. But the Savior, our Lord and Father in heaven, will raise us up and love us and take us in his arms and say, I will never leave you nor forsake you because I love you. I love you. Please talk to me, Jesus says. Show me that you love me. Show me how much. Not because you have to, but because you want to. Look at John 17, verses 20 through 26. When Jesus prayed for himself, then the disciples, and then finally for the believers, you and I. Look what he said when his prayer, as he prayed to God in John 17, 20 through 26. I do not pray for these alone, but also for those who will believe in me through their word, that they all may be one as you, Father, are in me, I in you, Jesus, that in relation with the Father, that they also may be one of us, that the world may believe that you sent me. And the glory which you gave me, I have given them, that they may be one, just as we are one. I and them, you and me, that they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that you have sent me, and have loved them as you have loved me. Father, I desire that they also whom you gave me may be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory which you have given me, for you love me before the foundation of the world." Oh, righteous Father, the world has not known you, but I have known you, and these have known that you sent me. 
And I've declared to them your name. And I will declare it that the love with which you love me may be in them and I in them. Oh, do you see the intimacy of Jesus' prayer? Oh, do you see the necessity of prayer communicating with God who is love, who loves us, and he wants us to love him back. Not by necessity in a sense that we have to, but because we want to, because we want to love him, because he loved us first. Intimacy with God is a relationship, thirdly. A relationship that we need to listen to his voice, Respond to his voice and calling, and finally respecting with our Lord, respecting our Lord who he is and obeying his commandments. Not of we have to, but because we want to. I don't come to church because I have to. I used to be in a denomination, religion of man that says, you better go to church or you're going to go to hell. I come to church because I want to be here because I love Jesus. And I have an intimacy with him. I have intimacy. I want to be more intimate with every one of you. I want to know all about you. I want to know what your life's about. I want to invest into God's kingdom and invest into you all his love because I care for you. As Jesus was moved with compassion, so we must be moved as well to be intimate with each other because we're family, because we have what? Abba, Daddy. Finally, fourth, intimacy is not the same as familiarity. We can be familiar with the coach of the UK, but that doesn't mean you're intimate with him and know him personally. You can be familiar with Obama, but that doesn't mean you know him personally or intimately. For me and my wife, I am intimate with my wife because she and I have become one, as the Word of God says. Two people who love the Lord coming together and they become one. That's intimacy. God desires us, my choice, to love him and be intimate with him. Not familiar. Many people are familiar with God. You know, politicians and everybody else say, oh yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm a Christian. I'm a, I, oh, I know God. Yeah, I know Jesus. Now, they can say it all they want through forked tongue and, and by lip service. But what's down here? Does Jesus really know you? Is he intimate with you? And are you intimate with him? He's always available. How many times do we forget him? And not to speak and pray to him. Gordon Lester, in his book Homemade, said this about familiarity and intimacy, and we'll close. Familiarity and intimacy are not the same. Each has a value in life, certainly in married life, but one is no substitute for the other. If one is confused for the other, we have the basis for major human and marital unrest. In marriage, familiarity is inescapable. It happens almost imperceptibly. Intimacy is usually hard to come by. It must be deliberately sought and opened up and responded to. Familiarity brings a degree of ease and comfort. Intimacy anxiously searches for deep understanding and personal appreciation. Today, are you truly appreciating Jesus? Do you have a relationship with him? I'm not talking about religion. I'm not talking about coming here to church on Sunday and fulfilling so-called obligation. I'm talking about intimacy every day with our Lord. The true fruit of a born-again believer that says, Jesus, you love me so much you went to the cross and died for me. And now it's my turn to say, Lord, I'm going to turn from my sin. I'm going to turn and respect you, and I'm going to praise you, and I'm going to honor you and say, thank you, Lord. I'm going to confess you as my Lord and Savior and believe that God raised you from the dead, and I shall be saved, Romans 10, 9 and 10. We must call upon the name of the Lord, and if we do, we shall be saved. And then it starts on that journey of being a disciple of the Lord that we can say, yes, I'm going to follow you. I'm going to be a true follower of Jesus. Will you make that decision today? that you will follow him because you can receive eternal life. No matter how bad things were in your life, no matter how times you might have not come to church or sinned or whatever that sin may be, Jesus today can wash away your sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Today is the day, is the first day of the rest of your life. Let us now come to the throne room of grace 
and make a decision not being ashamed of the Lord. Today, will you make that decision? Will you make that chance and offering to, to, to become intimate with the Lord? Will you take upon that challenge that God is convicting your heart and He can set you free from all that sin? Do it today. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you so much that you have given us your son. A son that says, come to me, all you are heavy laden and burdened, and I will give you rest. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Father, there's anybody here who has been burdened with things upon their heart that they know they've lied or cheated or did this or that. They know they failed you, God. Father, I ask you to convict their hearts and tell them, show them by your Holy Spirit that they can receive forgiveness. Forgiveness, because he did it for us. He paid the price for your sin. So, Lord, today, touch those hearts this morning. Let them truly see beyond this world and the need that we need, all need the Savior. Father, we pray for you. those who are lost, those who are missing, those who are suffering, those who are fighting cancer, those who are fighting illness, those who are needing a new heart. Father, regenerate it and give them a new heart, the heart of your son. We love you. We praise you. Pray this all in Jesus' name.